with a familiar face, a good friend to try it today, and a good friend to this region. Nan Griswold does a lot of fine work as she heads up the Second Harvest Food Bank, and we welcome you once again to the program, dear. Thank you. It's always good to be here. Well, it's, it's a, great to have you, and it's a very serious topic that we broached today, and that is uh, children who go hungry. I guess we don't think about that that often, but it's a significant problem. How so? It's a real significant problem, not only during the school year, but they, they do have breakfast and lunch, free breakfast and lunch right. through the schools. So people say, what's the problem? Well, in the summertime, there are not that many feeding sites. And for Scythe County alone, we have 24,000 children who are eligible for free and reduced lunch. And in last summer, we fed 4,700 of those children. But this is a national problem, Jim, because last summer there were 18.5 million children eligible for this program, and only 2 million in this nation were fed. What happens? I mean, I know you can't give an exact answer to that, but if you've got that much of a discrepancy, are they just not eating? Well, the sad thing is they're not probably eating because families are trying to stretch their income in the summertime. Those kids get a third or half of their nutrients during the day from that program of breakfast and lunch. That's just horrible. It, it is. It's, it's very sad. And now our, you're trying to, I think at the food bank, you're trying to do something called a summer feeding program. Now what's going on with that? Well, what we're trying to do is we're working with the mayor's office to try and get churches, rec centers, whatever, to open up and be summer feeding sites. They can get reimbursed for food through the state program. And last year, $7.4 million was not used in this state for this program. Not so it's used. Not used. So it's not one of these programs that doesn't have money. It just takes the will of the community, volunteers that will take an hour of their lunch time, to do it. churches that will transport the children to these feeding sites. Rec centers. And it could be centers. a place where they go to play basketball anyway. Right. I mean, it's right. a logical uh, thing to do it. There just has to be a sponsor, a site, uh, supervision of the children, food, and of course the children. Right. And but there are barriers in that. A lot of the children, there's safety barriers. The children don't want to walk, you know, or shouldn't walk. Right. Therefore, a church bus could get them there. Right. For example, in Winston-Salem, there's Bellevue Recreation Center, which is a stone throw from Easton School. Right. But those children would have to walk across two busy highways don't to do get that. there. Um, and there's a church right next door. You know, so if someone could take an hour, because children will eat in 15 minutes, right. and just pick those kids up and take them there. Um, now, are you coordinating people that can do this? I mean, can churches go to you? Do you have a website you want to mention? Well, www.hunger Northwest North Carolina. Okay. But they can call the mayor's office, Linda okay. Jackson Barnes, if they are interested in okay. this, and she would be happy to. Um, get the state to set up a training session for these children. And this is something Mayor Jones is really pushing right now. Well, as we look at the, uh, the Dudley logo, the folks at uh, Dudley Products uh, are very interested in this uh, kind of uh, initiative and very supportive of the food drives, and uh, they're helping to bring this segment to you. So there's that big quality cue up there on the screen. But as we look at that, remember that uh, we need your help in the community, so do that. And will you come back and see us? I will come back and see you, and hopefully have we, I can report we have a lot of more feeding sites in the summer for our children. Thank you, Nan Griswold. Thank you. We'll be right back after this.